are here tonight to show our appreciation to OHEL for all that they do for the community. There are many programs, including foster care, in-home services, mental health, and elder care services, have all filled a void that once existed in the community. In today's day and age, where people are often only viewed as a body with a price tag, it is hard to find an organization, hospital, or government agency that looks at people and sees a soul. But OHEL does. When a person comes to them for help, they don't focus on how much money will be spent, but rather on how to make this individual, this soul's life better. What better way to support them than by attending their annual gala and helping them raise the funds for their many causes? In addition to the services that OHEL provides, they also work to educate the community on the many challenges we all face. Challenges that people may feel ashamed of, feel the need to hide, or make them feel alone. Why are my husband, Bobby, and I one of tonight's honorees? Why am I here at the podium? Because like all of you, I have a story. But my story and OHEL are heavily intertwined. I'd like to share my story so that hopefully you will feel enlightened and educated. And if you are one of the people with a similar story, you won't feel ashamed or alone. My story begins with the family of Kanai Nahara 11, who have received so much from OHEL. Community rehabilitation, residential rehabilitation, and an OHEL base Ezra home established for four of my brothers. Therefore, I am looked at with both awe and skepticism. I am someone to socialize with and befriend, but not someone to get too close to or even marry, because my genes are considered blemished. My special brothers, who I would not trade for anything in the world, are considered imperfect and defective. I have seen people believe that they can dictate to God which challenges in life they want. But I have learned that God only gives what he knows we can handle. It is up to us to rise to the occasion. Let me tell you the rest of my story, the story of what it was like growing up with four developmentally disabled brothers, two regular brothers, and four regular sisters. I am told there's such a thing as sibling rivalry, that siblings are jealous of one another or fight so much they can hurt one another physically and mentally. I wouldn't know, because in my family of 11, we never fought, were never jealous, and certainly never used words like moron, stupid, or crazy. We defended each other. We cheered each other on. We knew from a young age what challenges really meant. While some may poke fun at you for reading funny or not reading fast enough, we knew there were those who couldn't read at all. So we coached each other, gave each other tips, and tried to help each other succeed. When a friend came over to play and another sibling wanted to play along, we let them because we saw the hurt when one of our brothers waited for a friend to play with, but no one came. We were good to our friends, too. When we were captain of a sports team or brought our ball to play with at recess, we made sure everyone who wanted to play got picked for a team, no matter their ability, because we saw and felt rejection when one of our brothers sat on the sidelines day after day wishing to participate in a game. When we were counselors and color work captains, we made sure each person had a place and felt included because we saw our brothers fight with everything they had to be included and to be just like everyone else. We saw as young kids what it really meant for parents to want their kids to be the best that they could be and not what parents wanted. Who would have believed that my father, 
a prominent Orthodox rabbi of a large, illustrious community, and my mother, daughter of a world-renowned Rosh HaYeshiva, would send four of their six boys to public school and set their goals as simply saying Shema and Brachot every morning slowly and clearly and to greet everyone they meet with a nice shalom and a strong handshake while looking them in the eye. We learned what responsibility as parents really meant as my parents would get up and daven with my brothers every morning and say Kriya Shema with them every night. Even today, when they live in an Ohel home, they still daven with them, never relying on others to do what they believe needs to be done. We were reminded daily of the proper way to treat our parents, as our brothers always listened to what my parents said, never spoke back or talked in a disrespectful manner. If I ever stepped out of line, even before my parents had a chance to discipline me, it was one of my special brothers who would say, Hindi, that is not the way you talk to a mother. And how do you argue with someone who has limited intellect and is right? We learned that when a sibling starts singing in a busy street on a rainy day in April, it's nothing to be embarrassed about. In fact, we could be happy for him because he made the connection of <laughs> April showers brings May flowers, something we probably all understood right away, but took him longer to comprehend. More importantly, there was nothing any sibling can do to embarrass us, despite the many steers and comments we endured, because we experienced very early on that being different still offers something unique to the family. In our home, there was never a bad morning because every morning meant a new day, a new beginning, something to look forward to. Monday mornings were especially exciting because Monday and morning both started with the letter M. We knew the importance of structure because structure has a way of keeping things in line and manageable. But we learned very early on that life is unpredictable and you can plan and hope, but humans and children are not robots and things sometimes happen or change just because. We learned how to make sacrifices. Yes, it hurt that I couldn't get a Cabbage Patch doll when all my friends had one but if it meant my brother got an extra physical therapy lesson and he can now ride a bike, I was excited for him and learned to play with my friends all. Lastly, and probably most importantly, I learned the true meaning of love. I learned what it means to love someone and not see their faults and to love with no strings attached because in my brother's eyes, I am perfect. They love me for being me and expect nothing back. They are truly excited to see me every time I see them or they see a friend of mine. They call me daily to say hello. Yet, when they meet someone who knows me, they will ask them to send me their regards because I am their sister, their perfect older sister. This past summer, we suffered the death of one of my special brothers, Maishi. A friend of mine who hadn't had the opportunity to meet Maishi commented that he never saw grown men cry at a funeral like they did at Maishi's. Over a thousand people were at his funeral, a few hundred at his graveside. Many canceled their vacation to be around for Shiva as they mourned and felt Maishi's loss. But only 12 people sat Shiva because we were his kin. We were special. So the next time you meet someone who looks funny or acts funny, whose mental capacity is different, remember, they are not just a physical body with a gene or two that went wrong. 
They have a special story to tell. They have a unique story to share. Get to know them. Get to know their parents and their siblings. You will be transformed. You will be inspired. You will become special. This story has been my story for over 30 years, but many events happened these past few years that heightened the fact that I have a special story, a story that needed to be told. So when Ohel approached my husband Bobby and me for the third time to be honorees, I realized I couldn't say no again. What better place to share my story than at an Ohel dinner when Ohel is responsible for writing the next chapter of my brother's lives? Growing up, I always wondered, what would happen with my brothers when my parents could no longer care for them? Would my siblings and I be able to care for them like my parents did? Would we be able to give them the love and security that make them so happy? Now I don't have to worry, because I know they are in good hands. At their home in Ohel based Ezra, they are people, not numbers. They have healthy meals, go on an outings, trips, and summer vacation. They go to work or programs and are surrounded by a caring staff. They even got to pick the paint color of their bedroom before they moved in. And when tragedy struck our family, OL was there to help in every way they could, whether it was doctor appointments, overnight hospital stays, or just breaking the sad news to my brothers the right way. They have laughed with us, and they have cried with us. They have shared in our joys and in our sorrow. But this is not an honor that belongs to me alone. It is an honor I share with my siblings, my special siblings, because they helped make me who I am today. They made me worthy of receiving such an honor. It is an honor I share with my regular siblings, because it is their story too. The same, but different, as we were all affected differently based on our placement in the family and or gender. It is an honor I share with my husband, sibling-in-laws, and their parents, because they didn't see us as damaged goods, but rather as siblings of a beautiful story, a story they have come to love and accept as their own. It is an honor I share with my grandparents, uncles, aunts, cousins and dear friends, because they realize a story like this can't blossom in a vacuum, and they have each reached out and helped in their own way, some even taking ownership for parts of the story. It is an honor that I give to my parents. Rabbi and Rabbi Tim Reisman, the true owners of the story. They are the master storytellers. 30 plus years ago, when situations like this were kept hidden in the closet and not talked about, they realized they had a beautiful story to tell and brought it to the forefront. It is through them that this wonderful story all takes place. It is a credit to their outlook and acceptance of life and their guidance through life that a small story of young children became a grand story of grown adults. It is an honor that I, along with my parents and siblings, thank God for. For he has chosen us to be the vehicle for which to tell his special story. Thank you, oh hell, for all that you provide my family, the comfort, the care, the peace of mind. Thank you, oh hell, for allowing me to share my story. And thank you all for listening.